Okay, you've heard a lot about estimates. Now let's just dive in and build one. We're gonna start from scratch. We're open here already and we have our account, but we're gonna do what the application asks you to do from the very beginning is build your personality. Personality is your contact information and a lot of those specifics uh, to your usage of Blinkvid. New personality, we're just gonna call this one RGGEDU2. Here's the opportunity to put in your business contact info. That's gonna follow you along as you uh, output your estimates and your eventually your invoices. Am I an agent? This is used a lot of times by photo agents that have multiple photographers uh, beneath them. One thing you'll notice down here at the bottom is a default item catalog. Now this gives you some options based upon your primary function of your business. Uh, we're gonna go here to commercial photography, but you, as you can see, there's some other options. Just know that once you pick that, you're not locked into it. I'm gonna show you in just a minute here, you can go in and customize that. So we've got our personality. We're gonna create that. And now here we are, RGG EDU2. So this is the Blinkbid dashboard. This is what you're gonna see from here on out as you open the application. This kind of shows you where you exist in the Blinkbid universe at any given time. You can go from here straight into creating a new job. You can add new contacts. This little map here uh, shows any jobs that you currently have shared. This is one of the great features of Blinkbid right now is that you can share projects with other Blinkbid users. This is really nice because it gives you and any other users the opportunity to interactively work on estimates. Anybody that it's shared with can make changes and there's a log that will show you what's been changed, who changed it, what line item is example, et cetera. Recent jobs whether they're in the estimate, the production, or the invoice stage, they're gonna show up here. And then it has a, a contact list, basically your address book. So if you have reoccurring clients, all the information is in there. If you're using Blinkbid to invoice as well, this is gonna show you where your invoices stand, how many you have outstanding, if you have usage licenses that are coming up for expiration or renewal. Before you start a new job, there are some things that I want you to take the time to, to put into place so that once you are building estimates down the road, you already have kind of the back end information in place. We're gonna go first to settings. First thing you see here is the item catalog. These are all the potential line items that you can have on, on an estimate. The item catalog that you set earlier as default is going to show up here. These are lists of commonly used items that Blinkbit has built as these categories. You can go in here and you can change them. If you have a, a special category that isn't represented here, you can add the category or you can add line items. We're gonna add what we're gonna call just a wrap day. You hit that and now wrap day shows as one of your uh, potential line items. Go through here, spend some time on this, make sure that you have anything that you can think of that you might be uh, wanting to include as a line item. You can come back later once you've started an estimate and add line items, but it's easiest just to kind of try and knock out as much of it as possible. Another really nice feature about uh, this portion of the website is the ability to lock in standard rates. Let's say you have a camera operator that you work with regularly, you know their rate, just go ahead, choose that, put in the right there. Now, every time uh, you build a new estimate and you select camera operator as one of the line items, that rate is gonna show in there listed. Now, again, you can go in and edit it, but it's just nice to have a lot of these things preloaded. Once you have your item catalog all built out, you have the option to change your financials too. You can adjust your taxes and your currency based upon what country you're working in. You can attach bank accounts to it for incoming and outgoing payments. If you have an agent, you can set the agent's rate here, kind of their markup and you can streamline all your business by linking up with a QuickBooks account. Let's move on to terms. This is a portion that I can't emphasize enough. This is such an important component of your estimate. The estimate itself, that's the money part of it. This is the legal part of it. Every estimate that you send out for a signature should have terms and conditions on it. One of the great things that Blinkbit has done is build some default terms. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and customize these, but these are really good starting points. So we're gonna go into estimate terms, default text. These are all terms that have been run through by lawyers. These are legal. These are things that you can take to court. My suggestion is I'll go into the estimate, the invoice, the usage license, and your terms and conditions, and go with the defaults. 
With terms and conditions, rather than just one set of default text, we have templates. Now these templates are based upon the location of your business. Different countries are gonna have different legalities and different rights that are afforded to the photographer. So we're gonna to go to the United States, click OK, and again, we get all this text. We have all these fields filled out now with the default text. Take some time, go through them with a fine tooth comb, really come to understand them and see things that you might want to change or customize to your own business. But if you change absolutely anything, consult the advice of a lawyer. There are some great resources out there for intellectual property lawyers that know exactly this. Make sure that you get somebody else's sign off on this that understands the laws before you put any of this into action. We're gonna go on to document appearance now. This is the overall look and feel of your document. You can upload your logo, you can adjust the type size, and you can choose the fields that are gonna appear on the estimate itself, on your invoice, all the details that are gonna follow all your documents along. Okay, so we've got the basics set up. Let's start a job. So we're gonna to go to jobs, and we're gonna hit new job. Now, First thing you want to do is set the contact. You know, for this, uh, this is going to be one of our internal projects. Set a job name. Make sure this is something that uh, both you and the client are going to understand. This is a name that's going to follow along. So you can have your, your job number that is something recognizable to you and you don't really only kind of applies to you and your bookkeeping. Make sure the, uh, the job name makes sense to everybody involved. We're going with Project Cobra Kai here. In the job description, this is your opportunity to really kind of give an overview of what this project is. This is where all the details from the brief, the RFP, or the deck that you are building this estimate off of are, is going to live. This is going to detail uh, the number of shoot days, the subject matter of the shoot, where you're shooting. All of the highlights from that deck should live here because you can't assume that that deck and this invoice are gonna travel with each other at all times. Fill out the job description, hit create, We've got our blank estimate now. Find a method that really works for you. This is a tool that's supposed to make your life a lot easier. So build a workflow that really makes sense with your projects. First thing I always do is just hit this plus button. This brings up that whole list of line items we were looking at earlier. Now bear in mind, if you pick anything as you should out of this fees section, that's always gonna appear up top, above the line. That's gonna come into play on your estimate and on your invoice in regards to taxation, advance payments and whatnot those apply to everything that's below the line, the costs. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna start adding some things here. Fees, obviously you're gonna have your photographer's fee. There's gonna be some usage on this project, there's gonna be some travel. Bear in mind, you need to be invoicing, you need to be estimating for every amount of time that you spend on this. These estimates are a great opportunity to really kind of educate the client what's required to put these projects together. So put it all on line items, don't just put your rate for X and number days, break it out, show them that the, there are other things involved in this aside from just the shoot day. Your photographer's fee should apply only to those shoot days. Let these other items spell out what else is going into it. So we're gonna have some pre-production, which could be your time spent with assistance gathering gear. That could be some tech scouting. If you're being asked to do any art direction, if you're building storyboards, include that. Build line items to delineate all of those tasks. Let's add a wrap day too, because uh, projects are never truly finished when you call wrap on set. There's always some things that need to be done. So we have some talent, but uh, there's no casting involved. So we're gonna pass that by for now. Let's build out the crew. So you know you need an assistant. We're gonna have a digital tech on set. Now this is one of those times that you can uh, customize this early on. If you're in a market that hairstylist and makeup stylists are one and the same, make that a custom line item. You can also do that right here. Customize that right there. And we've got a producer on here, and we're gonna have a wardrobe stylist. Build these lists out. If you have special needs on set, include them in here, add those line items. Insurance, always include insurance. If you're not carrying liability insurance yet, get insurance. If you're gonna pull a certificate of insurance, they usually charge $25, $30 to issue that cert, but insurance is the cost of doing business. Always put a line item in there for liability, and just like you would rent back gear, charge back your insurance. It's doing the client a favor that you have that insurance. Make sure that uh, you know that it gets included in uh, in your costs. Okay, we're going to do a location scout on this, and then we're going to have some fees and permits based on our location. Miscellaneous craft services 
and meals. Always feed your crew. Now I skip around this list a little bit because you'll see the items appear in the order in which they're added. And I like to keep a certain order to my estimates just to keep them tidy. If you add things and you want them in a different place, I'll show you in a minute how you can move those around. So we're gonna go to rentals. Again, whether this is uh, gear that you're calling in from somewhere or if it's your own gear, rent it out. So we've got some camera and lenses and we know we've got some lighting. We're gonna have an RV on this one as well. Expendables. This is something I always add to an estimate. This is your gaff tape. These are your gels. These are batteries. These are things that are in use on every single shoot. Make sure you include a line for expendables. This is a still shoot, so we don't have any audio on this. And uh, we're definitely going to have talent. We're going to have uh, two adults, two kids. There is a line for agency commission on here. I generally don't use that. I'm going to show you in a minute where that comes into play. We're not traveling in the talent, we're lo using local talent, so no travel fees for the talent, but for the crew and for the photographer, we're gonna bring them in. So I've got my uh, travel costs split up uh, in a kind of peculiar way. Again, this is just a way that makes sense to me. Feel free to organize these in uh, whatever way makes most sense for you. So we're gonna be flying in, so we have our airfare. The cost of doing business. You have to eat during a, your travel. That all needs to be billed back. Per diems, I'll show you in a minute why per diems differ from your meals. And then excess baggage. There isn't an airline out there anymore that isn't charging at some point for excess baggage. Make sure you're getting uh, paid back for that. We're gonna have a car rental when we get there. And uh, we're gonna have some uh, gas fees. Wardrobe, I always break this out into purchase and rental depending upon the nature of the shoot. Sometimes it's just the matter of the stylist going out and purchasing wardrobe. Sometimes you have some specialty costume that uh, rental is possible. This is just a matter of the stylist going out and buying wardrobe. So we're just going to purchase. Shipping. Now this does not necessarily include the shipping for rental gear that you might be having uh, shipped in from another city. Include that uh, number in with the rental fee. This is shipping for incidentals like your hard drives. It's a good idea to ship a hard drive, ship a duplicate hard drive um, separate from the crew. That way you know there's always a backup. If you are shipping um, equipment to or from the set, this is where you're gonna wanna include that right there. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna hit this right here and just close that. Let's start putting in some numbers. So when you hit any light item, you see it expand to all these options. Quantity, time, rate, markup, memo. Quantity, is, I always use as the number of people or the number of items that are occupied in that row. If it's one, I generally don't put anything there. So that assumes it as one. This is a four day shoot. So we're gonna have four in there. You can choose the duration. This comes into play once you get into post-production. In post-production, if you're retouching images, if you're doing it by the hour, you can include that in there as well. We have four days. And my day rate on this is 5,000 a day. And you see it automatically calculates right there for you. Now I'm gonna have two assistants on this. So I hit two in the quantity and they're gonna be there for five days actually. Although it's a four day shoot, I have them in the studio a day ahead of time so that we can pre-light. They're both coming in at 500 a day. Now, when you hit one of these, one of these things you're gonna see also is advanced. Taxable is for tangible goods. If you are selling the client a hard drive with the assets on it, there's something that's actually being handed over. You're required to add tax to it. So you hit the taxable and you can add the tax rate or the tax rate that you've set back when we set up your personality. Pension and welfare, if it's a union job, if you have talent, you have people that are being paid through payroll, you'll want to hit this pension and welfare and it's going to calculate the percentages for you. So we have our digital tech. They're just there for our four shoot days. Okay, so we get to our hair and makeup stylist. Again, they're gonna be just there for our four shoot days. Now, as you get into some of these crew roles, you're gonna understand why you want to include the number of shoot days in your job description. If a client isn't familiar with reading an estimate, there may be some confusion as the, to the number of shoot days just by looking at this crew because you have people on for different number of days. You'll see different people will be with you days prior, wrap days, you're gonna to wanna to delineate the actual number of shoot days. So we're gonna have a producer on for a, a four day shoot. We're gonna have them on for seven days, two days of pre-production and a day of post-production. 
And again, this is something to bear in mind too with your market also. Some markets, producers are paid by the day and some are by percentage. That's something to talk around, talk with uh, some of the photographer groups in your area and find out kind of what the norm is in your area. Okay, our wardrobe stylist, we're gonna have them on for seven days. That's a four day shoot plus two days of shopping ahead of time and a day of returns on the back end. Now liability, as I mentioned earlier, this is something you absolutely should charge for. What actually you charge is going to greatly depend upon what you pay for liability insurance. It can be dependent upon how busy you are, the number of shoots that you're doing, how large the shoot is. This is a very unexact science. I always break this out by the number of days because you are charging them back for the liability insurance that you're having on set with you during just those shoot days. So we have four days, we're gonna put in $200 a day for that. Okay, location scout. Again, this is a individual, so we have one person scouting, but they're gonna need three days to scout for the location. And then locations, fees, and permits. This is gonna vary greatly based upon where you're scouting, where you're actually gonna be doing your shoot. Sometimes it's simply a uh, permit fee where you just have to pay to be there and sometimes you're actually paying a location fee. Um, there is a line item on here for location fee as well um, because some locations are gonna require both the permit and the fee. This is just a permit. We're gonna be shooting in a park. We're shooting there for four days. We're being charged $25 a day just uh, for that permit issuance. Craft services, again, this is four days. This number is going to slide based upon the number of people you have there, the size of your crew, the number of talent. A couple things to keep in mind. Do you have kids on set? If you have kids, uh, they're gonna have chaperones with them. So uh, always factor in you know, the extra people outside of just who's showing up on the estimate. Meals and location. Now this is gonna vary based upon the meals that you have on set. Again, we have four days and uh, I'm gonna put in $500 a day on that, and that's gonna cover um, our crew and talent for you know, breakfast and coffees and a good uh, lunch that's gonna be brought in. Camera lens, now this number is going to vary again based upon if it's your own gear, if it's gear that you're having shipped in. If it's gear that you're having shipped in for this number of days, include those shipment days because you're paying for it every day that it's out of the rental house, so bill that back. Inventory that's coming out of your studio, just bill for the, the number of days that uh, you're actually shooting. So this is our own gear. We're gonna put in $350 for, for our kit fee on there. Now lighting, we're getting that from rental house, but it's local. So again, just the shoot days, $250 a day on lighting there. And special vehicles, for our purposes, this is a motorhome for the talent to change. Always talk with your motorhome driver to make sure that uh, you know if there are any extras. Are they working on eight hour days, 10 hour days? You know, make sure that you know everything uh, going into it and include that here. Again, they're charging you for gas. You need to charge that back to the client. Expendables, what's going into your shoot? Is everything battery powered? Are you having to uh, tape down a lot of cords? Are you going through gaff tape? Are you gelling everything? Keep all that in mind. Make sure that all gets billed back. By the number of days, $50 is always a good number for me based upon uh, what your particular shoot calls for. Now talent is where we get to this markup. Most any agency is gonna charge you an agency fee. We have two adults here. We have them both for four days and we're paying them $1,000 a day, but the agency is charging us 20% markup. That's the agency fee. You hit that and you see that's calculating their time on set plus that agency fee. Now, when you go through and you create your invoices, you're given the option whether the talent is billed to you or billed to the client. It also depends on whether or not the agency is what they call a signatory, or maybe they're a union signatory, which requires them to go through a payroll service. Have all these conversations up front so that you know where the talent billing is going to before you submit the final invoice. Okay, we're gonna have uh, one kid on set. They're only gonna be there for two days of the four day shoot. And we're paying them $500 a day but again, we're paying the 20% agency fee. Okay, so travel for our crew. Let's go back here and see. We have one, two, three, four, five people traveling in for this, plus the photographer. So we have five people there. Assume this is round trip, so that's just one. It's costing each of us uh, 450 for our round trip tickets. Memos here. 
This is a great place. If you have people traveling in from different locations, it's nice to use this field to kind of keep notes for yourself, but also show the client why these fees are what they are. If you have a person traveling from Phoenix, a couple other traveling from Chicago, use this area to list that just so that they understand why those fees are in there. Okay, meals. These are the meals specifically while you're on the road. Now, we are gonna be traveling one day on the front end, one day on the back end. So we have five people, two days of meals, and we're gonna give them $75 a day for their meals. Now per diems, this is very different than meals. This is for shoot days. So we have, again, five people, four days. We're gonna give everybody $30 for dinner. This is only covering crew. If you have talent traveling in for a project, remember they need dinner as well. The airfare we mentioned was round trip, so that's only one, but excess baggage you're paying for on both sides. So we have five people, two days, because you have your travel out and your return. Everybody's carrying uh, two bags, so we have $50 per person. Car rental, we're gonna have a car for six days. We have the day we arrive, the day we leave, and the uh, four shoot days. And we've got that to for $200 a day. If you're paying insurance at the rental agency, bill that back. None of this should come out of your pocket. All of this is the price of doing business. You have a rental car, you wanna return that car with a full tank of gas. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put in $50 for gas. You see, I don't have quantity or time in here. If you leave things blank, it just assumes one. Okay, now let's move on to wardrobe purchase. Okay, so we have two adults for four days and one child for two days. Each of them is gonna have a different wardrobe for each day. To make this as clear as possible, we're gonna add just the adults first and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add another line item for the child's wardrobe. So we have two adults, four days. We're gonna allow $200 per um, day for the adult wardrobe. Now we're gonna go back up here, we're gonna hit this again and we're gonna go down to wardrobe. We hit another line item, even though it's the same thing, it's gonna come up as a separate line item. So we have one child who's gonna be there for two days. We're gonna allow 150 a day for the kid's wardrobe. So now we've got all of these um, pretty well filled out. It's subtotaling down here for the, you at the bottom. You click that expanse to show you kind of the breakout of all of this. Fees are everything above the line. Production total is all of your costs. We've got some markups. Again, that's the agency fee on the talent. So we have your usage fees. This is a big conversation you need to have with the client. A lot of factors go into factoring this usage fee. Let's say we have three different scenarios each day for 12 scenarios. The client has asked for a hero image from each of the scenarios. So that gives us 12 images. We're gonna put in 12 for our quantity on usage fees, one for each image. And um, we're granting them a usage fee of $3,000 per image. Travel, again, these are days that you're spent not working on other projects. You should be paid for your time moving to and from a project. This is separate from everything else because you need to consider the fact that maybe you're traveling from another project. Maybe you need to travel out there a couple days ahead of time and maybe you're not you know, traveling with the rest of the crew. So we're actually gonna have uh, the photographer go out there a day ahead of time to uh, do a tech scout. So there's actually going to be three travel days in there. If you like to, you can um, add that tech scout as a separate line item. We're just gonna keep it as a travel day in here. Rate on a travel day, again, this is gonna vary greatly dependent upon your market. It's fairly standard that your travel day is half of your fee. So we're just gonna use that as a rule right now. So travel days, we're gonna put it at 2,500. Pre-production, this is considered um, days that you spend in the studio just gearing up, sitting down with the client, going through the deck, anything that is done, before you leave to head to the set. Let's say we're gonna spend four days in pre-production. The rate on this is varied based upon what is really involved in those pre-production days. We're gonna say that these are days spent in your studio, so it doesn't completely take you out of the mix on other, some other projects. You might be able to split those days up. So we're just gonna put those in at 500. We're gonna take a day to sit down with the producer. Maybe we're gonna sit down with our uh, retouching artist to go through some specifics on uh, um, client requests on the images. So we're gonna just spend a day doing that and we're just gonna put that in at 500. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with where this exists now. The nice thing about this is there can be plenty of back and forth. You can go up to this little uh, pull down right here and it gives you all sorts of options. 
One of the options is share the job. You hit that, you put in an email address, and you can share that with anybody else that has a BlinkBit account and allows them to make any modifications. Go right here to sort categories, and that's going to allow you to move some things around. So I'm gonna take my insurance and I'm going to just drag that to the bottom. I'm gonna bring my talent and my wardrobe together. I have my travel categories together. I can bring miscellaneous down here uh, by insurance as well. And that looks pretty good. We hit save, that moves everything around. One other feature on here that may come into play as you are sharing the estimate or uh, maybe early on um, you're asked to submit several different versions of an estimate. Estimate revision right here is a little pull down menu. You can create a revision that is basically duplicating what you already have in place and then you can then modify it. That way you're not starting from scratch to build an entirely new estimate. Let's say the client asked to see an option that maybe had a couple more talent or an additional shoot day. You can use this estimate that's already in place as a template and then build from there. Just click new revision, name it, And there you are. Now it's going to come in as items locked. Hit this activate right here. And what that does is allow you to then go in and modify any of these line items. This menu right here will affect whatever revision you have active at the time. And at any time you can go back and forth and toggle between your two different revisions. Anytime you toggle back and forth, it is going to lock the one that you just opened, just so that you don't accidentally change anything. It's assuming whichever is the active is the one that you're making changes to, and the other one remains unchanged. You can make revisions to these at any time just by hitting that activate button. I'm gonna go in and print the estimate. Now you can do a number of different things when it comes time to actually submitting the estimate. If you're working with a client that uh, has BlinkBid, you can share it. My suggestion would be is send it to them though. Um, you don't want to share a live estimate as the final estimate because that opens up the possibility of things being changed. We're gonna print the estimate. It gives you option here of itemized, which is exactly as you see it here with just the line items. Summary, which is just gonna give you what we saw down at the bottom is just that general breakdown of fees, costs, markups, or composite, which is what I always like to do. Composite is gonna give you the summary at top and all the items down below. Always include terms and conditions. Even if you're working for free and you have an estimate that is all zeros, still send it with your terms and conditions. That's just gonna cover you legally. Here's that uh, talent fees that we talked about earlier. Build to me or build to client are your two options. If it's build to me, it just includes those costs on the final invoice. If it's build to client, it separates those costs out, does not include them on the final invoice, and then you can hand that off to the client for payment. Go ahead and add your logo to it. We haven't uploaded a logo here, but uh, you add a logo, you have the option to have it appear in the corner, large over the top, whatever works with your branding. And go to print. And it's gonna open up a new window. Again, up here, this is your summary, and then all of your line items here. And then again, it's totaled for you down at the bottom. Your job description, when you fill it out, appears right here, right at top. So again, that just makes it very clear, the expectations, your responsibility, and what your agreed upon deliverables are based upon the concept of the shoot. So I'm just gonna output a PDF here. Change the file name to something that is recognizable to you and the client. Make sure it includes your name or your studio name as well as some version of the project name just so that the client can very easily recognize it on their desktop or in a folder. Go ahead and output this, attach it to an email um, along with your treatment.